Team, we're going to let you dance hallelujah. Stop our holy
So if you guys missed what we were doing today, we just felt a special anointing to just bless the dance team because they're such a blessing to us. So we just had them come up this morning, and we just had Kaylin sing over them and play over them. So thank you so much, dance team, for joining with us, their faithfulness every week. So this morning, I just feel a special um, anointing on just an intimacy with the Lord. So we, we are in the month of Elul, and that's when the king is in the field. And so he's with us all the time. We know that. But I think this month, he just wants us to really actually experience his tangible presence. So just join with us this morning, and we're going to sing about the blood, nothing but the blood. Cross your cross. 
feel like we're supposed to shift sounds here a little bit. So give us just a second.
I always like to start here. Every year I'm like, I use this picture, I should take it off, come up with a new one, but it's just so good. This month is about preparation and transformation. Anyone feel like they've been in a cocoon? Yeah. And now it's time to squeeze out? Yeah. Actually, you've made it. You've made it through the straits, as they call it, which was Av. So Av, my, who, anyone had a really difficult month? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so let's just say and prophesy that we're busting out of that cocoon and you know what happens when you bust out of that cocoon you have to go through the cocoon to get your wings you don't get the oil you need for your wings to spread your anointing if you don't go through the cocoon so if you've been in a wilderness spot or you've been in the straits or you've been on the wrong side of the eye of the needle now we get to peer through into an expanse of a field who's ready for a bigger field Amen. So that is what a lul. Uh, there, we're done. I'm not kidding. Okay, so <laughs> that's the whole lesson. No. But this month we are preparing for the High Holy Day. It's just a beautiful month. So I was driving from the lake this morning and it was just in a gorgeous atmosphere and just talking with the Lord. And all I just kept thinking about was our God is so good. He is so good. He wants to bless you and love you and shine his face upon you. And a lul is, that, is a picture of that intimacy of God. Elul is a picture of God comes to us first. That's, he is always pursuing us. I, and I kept just hearing the word first. He comes to us first, and then we have the opportunity to respond. So you're going to see that throughout this message, how God is, he, he's coming into your field. He's coming to you. The word became flesh and walked among the earth. Amen. All right, let's dive in. I like to get ahead of myself. Okay. 5783, the king is in the field, in specific your field. All right, Rosh Kadesh, we come every month so that we can celebrate the new moon or the head of the month. We come with our best, with our time, with our offerings, with our attitudes, so that we may be blessed through the rest of the month. And in the Jewish culture, it was a minor holiday, but they would come together and study the word and have a true celebration. They would dance, they would sing, and they would look at the word, and they would encourage one another, and then move through their month in faith that they were doing that with the Lord, that they would be blessed. That is the Rosh Kadesh. So say this blessing with me, if you can. May you give us long life and a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of sustenance, a life of physical health, a life in which there is fear of heaven and fear of sin, a life in which there is no humiliation, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we love, love of Torah and awe and reverence of God, a life in which Adonai, the Lord, fulfills our heartfelt requests for good. For good. Salah. Amen. Amen. Okay little uh, transition there I need to take off. <laughs> okay, so every month we look at these specific elements, and it's really cool. But just think about the prophetic open heaven that is above you. 
And every month there's a different flavor, a different season, a different holiday for you to grasp and for God to say, you know, do you like nature? Well, here, let me give you an element from nature. Do you like humans? Here, let me give you a tribe to study. Do you like the stars? Hey, we're going to look there too. So we're going to see what the, what the open heaven is for this month as we look at this. So we're going to look at the history of Elul, all the events of the past and present, the tribe of Gad, which is fortune, who needs favor, uh, the constellation of Virgo, the virgin, who needs nurturing, and the alphabet of Yod, which is completion. And it, it marries and blends, and you know how we do. It's a beautiful picture. Okay. Um, the color is the gray, jasper, or the hermamite, herm, a tight, hematite, who, who knows their gems? Imitate. Okay. Anyway, I got to wear my great houndstooth pants just for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's another thing. Yay. It's our last month for the camels. Who's going to be sad with me? Aww. So we're coming to the end, um, and we start at the head of the year next month. So we're ending our 5783 in the Hebrew calendar. So we have been out of the Garden of Eden for 5,783 years. And we're about to be in 578. Four. So we'll get another um, prophetic word and picture when we look at the four of the Dalit. So this is our last month of the Gimel or the camel. Um, so I hope you got all the prosperity that you needed this year. Of course, there's always more. Okay. So we have guarded our eyes and our heart, and we have believed Father God, right? Because remember in Tammuz, we, it was our film strip month. And God said, we're not going to fall into false worship like the golden calf. That happened in Tammuz. And then when Ahav, we were not going to believe the false report of the spies. We have been choosing and walking through these straits, as it's called, these difficult two months where we had to be women and men of action. We had to choose to not fall into idolatry. We had to choose not to be <clears throat> worshiping a golden calf. We had to choose that we were going to believe Father God and not listen to the voice of fear, but listen to the voice of faith. So then we come into Elul where God is going to meet you right where you are. He's going to come to you to prepare you so that you can then tabernacle with him next month. So this is what Elul is all about. This is another gift. Everyone say gift. Yes. Yes. From God to help us press into our destiny. This is we're going to be free of oppression and we're going to move into presence. Everyone say presence. Yes. <laughs> we're going to approach him and his countenance is going to shine upon you. Think about that. What, like the warmth of the sun, of the holy God, of the kavod, literally being in face-to-face -face panim in this 5780 year and shining on you. Imagine what you, if you could sit face-to-face -face with God and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, what would you speak to him about? What would you need from him? What blessing do you need? What instructions do you need? That's what this month is about. So we're thinking about that as we go through this message is what is heavy on your heart? What worries you? Where do you need strategy? Think about those things that are personal to you, and then Yolanda's job will be for us corporately, right? She gets that role. <laughs> but think about those things as we go through this lesson, because this is the month. This is the month to inquire of the Lord and have faith and expectation that he is going to meet you intimately in that place and give you revelation. And it's not going to be the same as before. That's what transition means. That's why we're constantly moving up this glory mountain because the next season has new things. And he wants to give you what you need to go into the new. And we're going to set a rear guard on the victories we've had in the past. Amen? Okay. All right, history and events. Elul is the sixth month, as I said. Now, we've taught on this before. We can go into depth um, lessons time to time. I really teach on it in more detail. But the seventh month, we get a new Hebrew year. It's confusing, right? Passover is in the first month of Nisan. Then in the seventh month, we get a new year. We have two calendars. So we have the calendar, what I like to call the glory calendar, and then the redemptive calendar. We're operating in the redemptive calendar. We need to be delivered. We need to get our supply, and then we move into presence. Originally, we got to start in presence, but what happened? The sin. The sin weight. The, you know, Adam believed Satan. And then we, God said, okay. We're going to fix that. We're going to know how to bind, muzzle, and gag Satan so that we can come into the presence delivered. And so we are on the redemptive calendar. But the good news is Jesus will return. And we'll return to the glory calendar Sunday. Amen? Okay, it is called the month of repentance, the month of mercy, and a month of forgiveness. In the two previous months, we've already covered this, Tammuz and Av, Israel committed two grievous sins. 
the golden calf and believing the evil spy, the report of the spies. <clears throat> but this month is to acknowledge God's love and guidance and ask him to show you your mess. This is why we have the month of mercy, forgiveness, and repentance, because we're going to go to God unashamedly with our mess. And he's going to say, let me give you some love. And what does God's love look like? Mercy, forgiveness, right? But it's a beautiful picture. There's no guilt. There's no shame. It is keep your head up high, and let's do this together. This is a little, okay? I am my beloved, and my beloved's is mine. Remember what I said about first. Who's the beloved first? God. God says, I am my beloved's. I am giving myself to you, and you are mine. You are precious to me. So in the Hebrew, this is really cool, in Solomon 6.3, Song of, not Solomon, Song of Solomon 6.3, it, it spells the acrostic in the Hebrew letters E-L-U-L -L is, I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. It's an acrostic for the month. Isn't that cool? That is what Elul is about. This intimacy, this level of I belong to the kingdom of God. Not just to the kingdom, but to him personally. An intimacy for this month. <clears throat> this is a process to experience new intimacy with the Lord. If you need to dig in deeper, do it. Do it this month. Do it today. Okay, so we're preparing for what we call the high holy days. So the Bible kind of distinguishes between these, right? We have our moeds, our pit stops, our um, Sabbaths, our new moons, and our feasts. And then we have what in between? We have the work days, the action days, the mundane days. God wants to be a part of both of those. Well, next month are the highest, holiest days on the calendar with Tishri <clears throat> going into tabernacles. Let me just go right there. I think I have the dates on here. So tabernacles next month will start with the Rosh Hashanah where the trumpet blast. We have the 10 days of awe. We have our day of repentance, and then we have our feast. But this month in Elul, God wants to come to you in your field and be there with you in the mundane. He wants to give you the strategy you need to, uh, to do the day-to-day, day-to-day, day-to-day. <clears throat> so we want to prepare ourselves for what's coming next with his glory and his presence by inviting him into our everyday life so that it is mirrors, right? We want that glory of God to be shining back out into all that we do. So they, they like to call it a haven in time. Have you thought about that? A haven a little time out, a little respite with the Lord, some face-to-face -face time. Like a city of ref refuge, a time to reflect, repent, and a time to receive forgiveness and mercy. This is a month to run into the Tower of Might. Could you imagine if you just ran to the Lord and just bumped into him on accident? You just took off running. You're not paying attention. You know how little kids will do sometimes. Or like you got the uh, double pane glasses too clean and you just... <laughs> what would that feel like if you just ran into the Lord? Uh, to me, it would be like a stone brick wall, but you would not be injured, right? <laughs> you, be, you would feel the strength and the almightiness and the kavod of the Lord, and it would hit, I mean, it, it would knock you off your feet, but you would not be injured. This is the month to run to that tower of might, that hu huge, mongous structure that can, can also shrink down and come down and speak to me here. That, I just like that kind of imagery. There is strength greater than you to, to encompass, and then you can deal with the rest. Okay, this, I, this graphic needs some help. Where's Selena? She's, <laughs> okay. Well, I, I really wish I could just convey this. As we go through these months and as we go through these cycles, what is happening? We are literally, if you could see outside of the physical world, there is so much more going on than just the physical. We're going to talk a lot about the physical today. But think on another level to the spiritual. You're literally stepping from one frequency and one atmosphere at a time in the spiritual. Every month he gives us a tool and a piece of revelation that you need in open heaven, so to speak, every month that you can literally like step through a door to a new level. So this month is about preparation, preparation and transition. Be thinking about what doors you need to step through to be more victorious next year. In the new head, as you go into tabernacle, into his presence, what door do you need him to open and reveal to you? 
That, and if you just look at this pyramid, look at the things. That we, we get new beginnings in chess man. We get war strategies. We get to know the difference between a good eye and an evil eye. We get righteousness and nourishment, identity, deliverance. You know, and it just builds and builds and builds and builds. And then here we are face to face with the Lord. You've had all this 5783 to be moving through this cycle. And here we are at the end and we're going to finish well. Everyone say finish well. And we're going to be able to say to God, what, what am I missing? What key, what door do I need for your thing? Whatever your thing is. What is in your field that needs fixed? Uh, keep this pyramid in mind this month and know that you're at the pinnacle of that. Because next year, you get more. I have an expectation of more blessing, more victory. You know, how many times do we get stuck on this problem that we need fix and we need strategy and we need, you know, revelation, but we fail to see that we are moving in a new blessing and we lose our dream. We lose sight of our dream. So some of you may need to ask God for a new dream, something to be excited about as we move into the next year. Did anyone ever feel apathetic? So that's what I'm, I mean, that was kind of my goal of this message today is just to bounce us out of that and into an expectation God's going to come to us first, and then we get to meet him there. Okay, we've had three months of action. Think about it. We had three months where God is giving to us. What was he giving us? In Passover, he delivered us. Then he gives us a revelation and supply that we need. Then we move into what I call the three months of action, the three months of harvesting. You know, the agriculture is a, God's perfect way to teach us how to, how to go through the systems. Who needs a new system? So we've had three months where God is giving us something, and then we have three months where we're working. We're in our field still this month, and then we have three months of God's presence. How beautiful is that? If that's not a beautiful system and cycle, I don't know what is. But I like the threes, Jesus, Holy Spirit, and God, the triune. I have a body, a soul, and a spirit, triune. I have three months of these designated things. So we have done well. You've been through two months where you um, worked hard, probably saw some messes, as you should, be, be revealed to you. And now this month you get to finish that month well, and you get to get your messes fixed, and the next year move up. Okay, here's the dates coming up. Rosh Hashanah is on September 15th. That's when we will blow the trumpet. So you have 40 days from the beginning of Elul to um, Yom Kippur. Everybody know what Yom Kippur is? That's the only day that God asks you to fast and repent. One day of the year. Everybody say one day. one day. What are we doing the rest of the days? We should be moving in joy, victory, worship, all these beautiful things that we get to do. So we have the 10 days of awe, and then we have Yom Kippur, a very solemn day. But it is that day of repentance that moves us into the, to the um, tabernacles where we get to spend most of our time. So here's the dates for that <clears throat> coming up next month. Right now, we have 30 days in a lul, plus the 10 days of awe, to get our act together. Act to thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Stacy, for that save. But this is 40 days of Teshuvah, which means to return to him, to be in an intimate level with him, and, and capitalize on our high holy days that are coming. All right, the king is in the field. Where does this concept come from? It is actually in the scripture a few times. It, is, it was tradition for the king to come out of where he does his everyday business, up in his castle, up in his throne, to come down to the people, to where they're camped, where they're working, and be accessible. Everyone say accessible. accessible. God is extra accessible to you this month. Is he always accessible? Absolutely. What do we do? We pray, we worship, we enter into the spirit, and we know that we can go get our downloads and what we need for every day. This month, though, he specific says, give me something that you really, really want to work on. I am accessible to you to help you succeed this month. I am coming into your field. You do not have to have an appointment. You don't have to have a special spirit language. You don't have to have, you know, we as Christians, as believers in Christ, because of the work on the cross, we have this kind of access but think of it more as an open heaven to the point that you can, you're going to have opportunities to share this with others this month. This group, this ecclesia, Yolanda, has prepared well. You know what it is to be face-to-face -face and panim with the Lord. 
but this is an extra month where you're going to be able to take that out, take yourself up another level, and be able to give that back to others, that kind of access. <clears throat> this is a month in Jewish tradition. The king would leave his palace. He'd set up a tent and dwell in the field, and people would stream in to see him. No security, no protocols, no pass-throughs. I mean, think if you had to go through um, all of his security in the castle to get to see him. You'd be, you'd be nervous by the time you got there. Nothing to be nervous about here. The king has made himself accept, accept, uh, accessible to all and benefits as well as the people. Okay, this is when God comes into your field. Okay, what is your field? Family? Marriage? Work? Ministry? Think beyond just the physical. Influence? Dreams? Battlefields? Attitudes? What field do you need him to come to this month? Broaden, you've come through the eye of the needle. You know, the eye of the needle is this skinny, tyro, narrow little place that, that you have an opportunity to look through. And when you choose to look through that and walk through that with the Lord, what, it's a huge expanse on the other side. I think of big green fil, you know, fields with beautiful flowers and just the beauty of the kingdom of the God with his continents and shining down like it you know, is our sun and our glory. That is what is a lul. We, are, we have come through that narrow eye of the needle and into the expanse on the next side. Selena's picture captures it really well. We'll look at it. Okay, God is concerned about your everyday affairs. This is exactly what Jesus did. He spent how many years as the king in the field? 33 years, right? Walked this earth and was the ultimate king in the field so that he could feel what you feel. And he could give you the recipes that you need to be victorious till he returns. That's the ultimate king in the field. Amen. John 1, 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Okay. Tribe of Gad. Everyone say Gad. Gad. His name means fortune. Who needs fortune? <laughs> yes. It also means favor. That's why this month is called the month of favor. God wants to bless you. And it's our double anointing because we're in the year of prosperity. The camels are bringing you your fortune. So if you didn't get it this year, this month is your month. You, you need to just be excited. <laughs> okay, Gad's on the southern camp with Reuben and Simeon. Um, his name also it refers to a troop. He could rally a troop. You were a part of an awesome troop, by the way, if you didn't know that. Uh, this is a month to find your order in the camp. So the tribes, is a, if you don't know what your tribe is, it might be worthy given, given us a call. Let's figure that out. Because you need to know where your puzzle piece is. What are you designed to do? Where do you fit? And that's when we study the tribes, we get to really see how the body of Christ operates together. Very cool. I, obviously, I enjoy the study. Okay. Gad is the seventh son of Jacob. His mother is Leah's maid, Zilpah. Gad, he's in the battle axe brigade. These are the tough guys. These are the guys you want to go to war with. You know, sometimes, God, your field, you may be in a field you don't want to be in. Never thought about that. How many of anyone in that camp? You're in a field that you don't necessarily like. A lot of times God is not going to take you out of that field, but he's going to give you what you need to succeed in that field. And when you quit fighting him on that and let him meet you there, there then you can maybe shift. We have, you know, that is a big piece of this. Well, that's just kind of what happened to Gad. He got put with Simeon and, and Reuben. I guarantee you he did not run to the front of the line and say, I'll take them. <laughs> nobody wanted them okay Reuben is hot tempered inconsistent and Simeon is flat out known as being mean you know these are the brutes of the 12 tribes well Gad had the tool set needed that God needed to handle them he was skillful in battle he was loyal he knew how to rally troops he you know he he I could just see him as being a very bright you know person with a lot of energy and he could handle them Maybe not the field. He probably didn't want to be on the south camp, but that's where God needed him to be. And the minute he walked into that role and grasped it, he is now the, tr the tribe known for fortune and favor because he accepted his assignment. See? Isn't it beautiful how it all intertwines together? Okay. God was noted as valiant men who were skillful in battle. He took these ruffians, and they were well-respected and well-wanted when these, when these tribes moved out together. Because they are the ones that can handle the enemy. Okay. Everything you read about Gad says he was faithful, steady, dependable, and fierce in battle. 
His name means fortunate. Jacob prophesied, Gad, a troop shall tramp upon him, but he shall triumph at last. So this is the month to know where you belong in that lineup and expect triumph. Moses prophesied um, over Gad. Um, his was very similar to what Jacob, what Moses prophesied over Jacob. Gad will be like a lion that will dwell securely, but will overcome and, and win against anyone that comes against him. Gad established on the east side of the Jordan with cities and livestock, and then he went to the promised land and helped the other tribes get established. He was faithful to his commitment and warred with the other tribes until the land was subdued. Every marker shows God in good favor. So, in return, you get to look for favor this month, a month of favor. Look at this cute camel. I know. I'm going to miss my camels. <laughs> well, none of the other alphabets are an animal. You know, they're all uh, like a tent peg or a door, or a window, you know, <laughs> I like the animal, okay, yod, everyone say yod. yod, it's actually spelled like nod, so you have to say yod, that's just not as fun, I vote for yod, anyone vote for yod, let's vote for yod, <laughs> am I allowed to do that, just change the language, all right, we can say nod, yod, everyone say yod, but don't nod, no sleeping, okay, a yod is an alphabet letter, um, or the um, aleph bet, they like to say, because they have so much meaning, they have a pictograph, um, they have a numerical value, and then they have a prophetic value. So we like to break it all down. So um, we already said it rhymes with nod. It represents the number 10, which is a number of completion. Several, okay, I so I picked 10 facts to go with 10. You ready? All right, 10 generations from Adam to Noah, and then Noah to Abraham. 10 commandments, 10 plagues. The 10th part shall be holy for the Lord, the tithe. The 10 days of awe, we get to do that soon. Um, and many, uh, many more for you to research. Let's keep going. Oh, yeah, I love that website, Hebrew for Christians. You guys get on there? Okay, it's the smallest letter in the alphabet, but carries a lot of meaning. meaning. It's a, just an impactful little guy. Suspended in midair, it looks just like a little apostrophe that we use today. Um, it is um, the atom of the consonants. You know, the Hebrew originally had no consonants, no, you know, no vowels. So they would use the little yod. To, you know, to break things up. All of the other letters begin and end with its form. You can find a yod in all the other shapes. Um, it is a divine point. I want to say point. Yes. That's why it's called a point month. Think about God pointing because it also represents the closed hand of God, the um, down. He's pointing down on us. He's being very pointed to meet with us this month. This is how yod flo flo flows into this. The month for mercy to help you get out of your mess. Let me say it again. Mercy. Mercy. Get out of your mess. <laughs> Yod is considered the starting point of the presence of God in all things, the spark of all things. Yod means an arm or a hand. It is form suggests a hand that is reaching towards heaven, and God is pointing back. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, God has appointed mercy from his hand. It's beautiful. All right, Yod is the first letter in the divine name Yahweh and Yeshua, and Jerusalem. If you spell things in the Hebrew, they all begin with Yod. So we got Jacob, Israel, Jews, Jerusalem, even a poetic Jeshurun, which is used in poetry. Okay. All right, so this leads us to the name of God that starts as two Yods in the name of God, Yahweh. So these are where we have been studying the names of God as we go through the months. We know that um, God is Nisan, right? He is... Um, <clears throat> How was I wording this earlier? So the God that gives, the God that heals, the God that sees, the God Almighty, and the God that is with us. Love, and right? You see? God says, I am all of these things. And this month, I am bringing all of those things into your court, face to face with you. All right, Virgo. Everyone's, everyone, who, who needs a mommy? Anyone? <laughs> so this month is known the mother month, the nurturing month. We're going to tie it all back together, okay? So if you need extra nurturing, extra love, extra mercy, and isn't that the picture of a mom? Like in the household, dad's right, the authority figure, maybe a little stern, a little gruff until he has a little girl, then they just melt. But, um, you know, and then the mom is what? She's the nurturer. She's the one that's going to um, forgive you first. She's the one that's going to give you mercy and forgiveness. She'll probably give you some instruction. That's a part of, but that's a part of someone that loves you and that nurtures you. So that is Virgo, is the um, picture of the virgin. There are no printed calendars. Oh, we already, this is a whole nother 
we've had this lesson a million times. We do not do um, astrology, right? We do astronomy. The stars were not made to tell me about myself. The stars were made for times and seasons and to tell me about God. That's what this slide says. Okay. All right, Virgo is the mother month, the nurturing month. See how she's laying prostate? When you study the names and meanings of the individual stars that make up this constellation, I found this beautiful summary um, in this Setterfield Gospel in the Stars. Virgo is that Messiah, the beautiful branch of the Lord. The second person, the sent one, was come as the seed of the virgin from the nation of Israel. That is the beginning of the gospel story. Starts with Virgo. Very in our pointed month of mercy and forgiveness. Um, she lies prostate because only Christ can lift us up. The brightest star, SPIC, um, the wheat is also in there. Uh, needs to fall and die in order to produce fruitfulness, just like Christ. The branch is the great embodiment of her hope and trust. Virgo, the virgin. Another camel. Aww. All right, well, now we have to wrap it up. Can we say boo? Okay. All right, so what are we going to do this month? How are we going to tie this together? One, we are going to pursue an increase in intimacy and nurturing with the, with the Lord. So when you look at the stars this month, you look at Virgo, I want you to think nurturing and intimacy with the Lord. You're going to know that you are his beloved and return that by being in love with the Lord. He's so worthy. You're going to find mercy and forgiveness when you run into that tower of might. How beautiful is that? Then you're going to prepare for your high holy days. And then we're going to remember that we are, have favor and reward, have an expectation. So we're going to go and ask the Lord to fix what is broken. We're going to find our place in our camp and in our troop. We're going to have known we are in the expanse of the field on the other side of the eye of the needle. We're going to remember that God is Shema. He is here with us. And we're going to move up our glory mountain. Last one. Do you think he's sticking his tongue out? Look at that. <laughs> I thought that was a good way to end it. I don't know. Have you, do they have a rolled tongue like that? Does anyone know camels? I don't know. That was a fun picture. Anyway, so this was the year. This is the last month of the 5783, the year for divine recovery to get your mess fixed and your increase in supply lines, favor, and fortune. Amen? Yes. Amen. Okay, now we have Selena's picture. Did she send her description with anyone? I'll read it if you if you have it. Gail, you want to bring your stuff? Yeah. <laughs> but see what I'm. Isn't this a beautiful picture of the field? See Virgo in the in the sky. Now, if you're not happy to see him, that's something you need to ask yourself. <laughs> I've had years like that where I'm like, <laughs> yeah. this, this comp as well as the um, blanket shawl in the back are gray for the color um, of jasper or hematite. Gray symbolizes wisdom, honor, and reverence. The gold thread symbolizes glory and angelic grin, realm. The month is about intimacy with the Father. The King is in the field, and we have open access to him. God sent Jesus to us so that we could have an intimate relationship with him. As we know the Son will, we will know the Father. God wants us to return to him and throw ourselves in his arms and be lost in his embrace. This is the month of good fortune. The scripture I chose is Proverbs 3, 6. Become intimate with him, and he will lead you wherever you go. And as you look at the shawl, the blanket shawl here, the gold crown is for the king, and the green, he's in the field for growth and prosperity. We didn't shock each other. Usually Selena and I shock each other. <laughs> Some special frequency going on. You want me to read uh, Selena's? No? Okay. I think we can deduce what's going on here. We have a beautiful bride, which is the church, the ecclesia, right? Meeting with the king in the field with the beautiful stars in the sky. A field, a big expanse. Yes, amen. amen. Okay, what's next? Lori, communion?
that we get to do some of that too. take our elements this morning. We take the juice and we take the bread. We thank you that you came into our field. You should step down off your throne to walk among us. To shed your blood broken but also break bread with us so as we take the cup we thank you that you shed your blood as we take the bread we thank you that your body was broken pierced and bruised and we thank you and remember we thank you for the covenant that we have with you by the shedding of your blood we thank you for the covenant we have with the body through the breaking of bread we do this now, remembering that you, you couldn't help yourself. Your love for us was so great that you could do nothing but be broken, pierced, and bruised, and shed your blood because your love was so great. And we thank you for that love. And we take these elements now in remembrance of you. So would you stand with us and worship? And we're going to start with this song that I love, and it's called Reckless Love. And I want you to really hear the words of this song. These words um, say that there's no shadow that you won't light up, no mountain you won't climb up, because he's coming after us. There's no wall he won't kick down and no lie that he won't tear down, because he's coming after us. 
And I feel like some of us need to pull into that today and realize that Jesus is in the field today and he's coming after us this morning.
tonight. Let's sing that shadow part again. And let's sing it over our field. Anyone who's in our field. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after you. Because there's some of you all that have some walls that you feel like need to be kicked down. So, Kaylin, let's just stay here for a few minutes and work on this a little bit. We need to stay here, but I need to explain why we're staying here. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's can, sometimes can you know, if you were captured and taken away, I want you to understand that. What if someone just came and captured you and took you away to be a servant or a slave? Sex trafficking. We used to do all kinds of things. But you couldn't get back to your home. You couldn't get back to the people that loved you. You couldn't get there. You know, somewhere you have to believe someone loves you enough to come rescue you. Someone loves you enough to tear down the walls, put on the machines that they have to put on to come and get you, whatever they have to do to come rescue you. The enemy lies to so many people and says, no one loves you enough and you're not worthy enough to be rescued. That's where we are this morning. So many times we don't believe we're worth it to be rescued. Or so many times we don't believe someone loves us enough to be rescued. When hard situations happen, one of the things you'll hear people say is, well, you know who your friends are. Have we ever been in those places? When, it's, when you're being accused of something or you're being uh, broadcast that you're not who you said you were, suddenly all those people that were in your life that weren't really friends, they don't remember who you are. And they run away. I've been in more than one of those lovely positions. <clears throat> We're like, nope, nope, just because I've known you for 20 years, I don't know who you are. Amen. Do you hear me? That's where we are right this morning. Because somewhere in our hearts, we don't get it that this is the God who loves us. He is going to come after you with everything he has. And all you have to do is say, yes, I receive it. Yes, Lord. Come rescue me. Come get me out of this place. Come take me to where I need to be. Because the only thing that stops him is when we fight against him. And it even says he's still fighting for you when you fight against him. I can't tell you how many times in my life I would 
renounce something or denounce something or say, oh my goodness, this evil or this situation or this wilderness I'm in is making me feel so bad. It must be the devil. And I rebuke it. I remember the day Holy Spirit said to me, it's me. I go, well, why would you take me through the wilderness? Why would you do that? Because it creates strength and character in us. Because it actually makes us something God can use. But you have to come. And I love Selena just said this the other week, this last week. God made me jump out of the frying pan into the fire. There's a reason. You need to be in the fire. But this is the God that loves you this month. He loves you so much. As they sing this song, I want you to understand... He believes you're worth it. And he will come through everything you've put up. You've put up to get to. He's got to do that. So when I hear this, I want you to understand that this Gad tribe, they were so amazing. They were so phenomenal. It says, they were described as being fierce as lions and swift as gazelles. They were men who were trained for war. The least of these warriors was said to be equal to a hundred others. The least one. The one that wasn't very good. The greatest was equal to a thousand. That's what God's sending to you this month. And that's what he's trying to send to you this morning. To help us find those doors, go up to those next levels, get more freedom, more deliverance, more intimacy with the Most High King. We talk a lot about face-to-face -face with God. It's not something that has to happen once you die. It's something He wants to do today, every day. He wants you to be face-to-face -face with Him, Him breathing on you, you breathing in Him. So this is this reckless love. So why they're feeling the need that we need to hang in this place is because you need to believe this guy's coming after you Amen. with everything he's got. Okay?
I need to share this testimony real quick. Um, there was a, a night this week that uh, I had this really intense dream. And uh, in the dream, it was like this like pressing in and like my ears were closing and I was having a hard time talking. And it was just this like really bad, just like uh, thing. And I felt myself praying in the spirit. And then I just said, um, like in the midst of this dream, I think it was my spirit speaking. Um, I just said, Jesus, send help. And instantly, absolutely instantly, I was ripped up out of that place. And I woke up and there was so much peace in the room, like just so much peace. And ever since that moment, it's like the, the name of Jesus, like the power of the name of Jesus and asking him for help is so much greater than any oppression that you could ever experience. And so um, I just wanted to give that to you. Uh. So we're going to sing the song No Longer Slaves. And I love this because it's getting out of that place of bondage and slavery. And it's also hearing um, and testifying of what God will do for us and who we are. Of 
So we're going to end on an upbeat song. So all you little dancer kiddos, why don't y'all come up here and dance with us for this one? I don't know, I'm pretty excited about this. We're singing about God taking our fear away. And look at this. Not one ribbon. Not one. I also want to tell you guys that uh, we're in the Teshuva time, you know, 40 days, and so I was praying about what to fast, and I was doing my dishes, and it just lit up in me, I need to fast fear, and so that's what I'm doing, for 40 days I'm fasting fear, um, and so yeah, it's been really good, and doing like what Selena said, Lord, I give you my fear, and I receive faith, and it's been awesome, so you want to do that with me real quick? Lord, I give you my fear about what I look like or what I sound like or what people think, about what you think about me, about what I've done, and I receive faith that you wash me in your blood, that you love me right where I'm at, that there's no wall you won't kick down coming after me, and we come like a child. joyful sound it's victory to you
sounds. Sing a little ditty, a little med melody. Move your feet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. What does order look like in heaven? I bet it looks a little something like this. today and I receive faith you really don't care about that at all oh. so I stand up straight and tall now I'm walking in to see you cause my king is in the field my king is in the field he's dancing here with me
else have a, a word or verse?
yards a trip, which means we need to shield up and, and collect on. So grab the hand of the person beside you, and we're going to shield up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tammy, would you pray a shield up prayer and that we go into the truth? <laughs> Father God, we present as a core body of Jesus Christ right now, and we thank you for the opportunities that you have presented us today to march and to glorify and to praise you. And we shield up with the blood of Jesus, and we charge everything with the names of God, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shema, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sikhnu, Jehovah Mekadesh, Jehovah Raha, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Gideon, yes. Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Shabbat, Jehovah Ishmael, yes, Jehovah Hasanu, Jehovah Kwana, Jehovah Shema, and El Shaddai, and Elohim. And we thank you that those names go before us, behind us, above us, below us, to the left and to the right, because they are your attributes. They are who you are, and we are those same things in you. And we also interface it with the seven spirits of God, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And Father, you have left us with all things that pertain to life and godliness, and we just praise you, and we thank you that we are a corporate body. And we all step into our true identities. Yes. And our spirit, heart, souls, and bodies are charged. Amen. With the Holy Spirit in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Go for it. 